Hi there, and welcome to this lecture. In this video, we're going to explore what are references. I've said multiple times in previous lectures that you should not worry about references. However, that has changed. We have come to the point where we do have to worry about references. But don't feel intimidated. The more you work with references, the more it becomes clearer what they are, how they work, and how extremely powerful they are. So, what is a reference? Well, Reference is basically a location in memory which points to another data structure, such as array, hash, or scalar. Reference allow you to construct nested data structures, such as hashes where keys point to nested reference like array or hash reference, or arrays that contain reference to hash or array reference at set position. I understand if this also is confusing, but don't worry. Just think of it that previously when we were merging arrays and hashes, we could not be able to point a key to a hash because our hash gets automatically merged in our, so to say, normal data structure, which is array or hash. With references, you can actually nest the hash structure or array structure, which can be very, very useful in a lot of scenarios. You might have also heard of a term passing by value or passing by reference. When you pass data in your code using value, you're duplicating the data in memory and allocating new memory space for your values. When you pass by reference, you're actually passing the location of data structure in memory instead of copying the data. Passing by reference can be extremely useful if you want to work with the same data reference in your code instead of constantly copying your data all over. Let's look at some examples. What I have in front of me is a simple hash, which is named hash, and it holds a key A and B, which points to values one and two respectively. I also have array, which is defined with, with, with this quote word syntax and holds string one, string two, and I have a scalar, which simply holds a number, 32. Now to get references to these values, we can use this special syntax, which is using a backslash before your data structure. What I mean is if I try to do print, I can say backslash hash, save this up, but console run my Perl script.pl, and I'm going to see this strange value. And basically, this is a reference in memory. It says that what they're printing out here is a reference in memory instead of actually printing out a hash. You could try to print out a hash as it is, like this. We're going to see B. 2a1, which is basically a list printed out, b being the key, and 2 being a value, and a a key, and 1 a value. The same would be with array, right? So if we say array, if we print out array, we're just going to print out the values there, string 1, string 2. Now, if we add a backslash before the array, we're actually going to see this syntax. It's going to say, hey, what you're working with here is array references, and this is the point in the memory for this reference. And this point in the memory is not going to change. So if we say, for example, print many array references, we're going to see that oh, maybe let's add a new line character so it's better formatting. So what I'm doing now on Mac is I'm pressing Option, Command, and Down Arrow to select multiple lines, space, double quotes, because we want to use special characters, and N, save this, go to the console, print it out, and you're going to see that all of these values are actually the same. It says it's a hash ref, and this is the point in the memory. We printed it out many times, but it never changed because this array has been already allocated in the memory, and all of these references are pointing to the same allocation of the data structure. Now, let's look at some example where we are assigning a reference to a scalar, and then we are trying to modify that reference. Let's do this. Let's create my ref1 equals backslash. Uh, let's choose array and do my ref2 and backslash array. And let's do this. Let's try to push something on this reference 1 because, well, it should be a hash. So ref1 and let's say string new just for new string. We go to console and we try to run this. It's going to say, Oof, you're trying to push a something on a scalar which is forbidden. And the thing is that when you're trying to manipulate references, you always have to dereference your reference before working with them. So basically what it means, you have to get your original data structure back in order to push or pop or access an element and so on. So referencing was using backslash before our data structure. Dereferencing 
is, well, you can actually do it many ways. One of my preferred ways is I use arrow syntax as such. And then I say that this is array and you use this asterisk. You save it and you try to run it and it didn't complain because we are dereferencing this and trying to push a new string, which is fine because we can use push method on array. Now let's also do this. Let's try to print out what we are actually getting back in array. So print dumper, oh, dumper, and let's print out the array. Let's save this, go to the console, run this again. And here we go. We see string one and string two, and we also see our new value. So as you can see, we pushed onto a reference that we dereference so we can, you know, push things on it. And we added a new value. And now we have three values on the array. We could do the same thing for reference two, right? We could try to push, let's say, new two. Go back to console, print this out. And here we go. So we have our two original values in our array, which were defined here. Then we have references, reference one, reference two, oh, apologies, which points to the same data structure in a memory. So basically reference one and reference two hold the same pointer in memory that says, hey, this is this array. And then we are using this reference to say, hey, add this value to this structure in memory. And the same for reference two. It's exactly the same pointer as reference one. So we're just adding a value new two to our array. So as you can see, all scalars that point to that reference when edited will affect the original data structure. Now we looked at how we can get a reference from existing data structure. Now let's see what happens if we are debugging these values with data dumper using references. So here I have my array again, I backslash it as we did before to get a reference in memory and we print it out. And you're going to see that instead of value one and value two being printed out with position var one, var two, we're actually printing out a position var one, which holds this square brackets having two elements inside of it, which is string one, string two. So this indicates that we are working with array reference. The same thing if we did with hash reference, percentage sign, hash, save this. What we're going to see now, instead of list items of E being, let's say, var one, pointing to var2, which is the value, you're going to see the hash reference is included in curly brackets, a1 and b2 being our keys and values. Now the same thing goes for the scalars. So you can say scalar and print that out. And instead of seeing just a value 32, we're actually seeing this backslash, which indicates we are working with array reference. Now it's worth knowing that you can construct reference the same way how you can construct a hash or array. And the way you do it, using the syntax as it was printed out in data dumper. So I'm going to get rid of these values. I'm going to say my hash ref. As we saw before, we need to use curly brackets. And let's say add a key hello one and rolled with value two. If we print this out, you're going to see this is a hash reference because we're using these curly braces instead of just parentheses, so we're working with hash references. The same goes with arrays. So let's say I wanted to construct a array ref, and what we saw before being printed out by data dumper was these square brackets. So does the same thing. To construct array reference, we can say number one, two, three, save this, and print out the array ref. Look at a console, and here we go. So our square brackets, one, two, three, and closing square brackets. Now, how can you access items in your references? I'm gonna go back and introduce the href with values of a, well, key pointing to value one and B pointing to value two. Save this up. What if I want to access, let's say in hash reference, only the key A? It's very similar as you would work with hashes. In hashes, you would say hash ref, and then you use the curly braces to access element A. However, what you need to do when you're working with references, you always need to dereference them. And one of the way how you can dereference is by using this arrow notation. So you can access key A, save this, print it out, and here we go. You can see that this is number one. If we wouldn't use the arrow syntax, if I get rid of this, save it, if 
try to rerun the script, it's going to say, hey, looks like you're not using the referencing syntax and you're accessing a hash somewhere, but I don't see this being defined. Did you forget to define hash ref? Well, technically, no, we didn't forget to define it. It's just we didn't want to access a hash. We wanted to access a hash reference, right? So this is where we need to dereference using this arrow notation. The same goes for if I want to access an element with array, within array. So I would say array ref, arrow syntax, square brackets, as we saw before with arrays, and then we access by index. So if I wanted to access item with value 2, which is at the index position 0, 1, I would type 1 here and I print this out and I see value of 2 because the same as with arrays, array reference, items are indexed starting at position 0. So 0, 1, 2. So if you're accessing index 1, that means you're getting this element. So what if you wanted to dereference your whole hash? You can do this in many ways. You could say hashref arrow notation, percentage sign, and asterisk. Save this, we go to our console, print it out, and here we go. We saw that same pattern of elements being key value printed out. It's exactly the same for array ref. However, you would replace percentage sign with add symbol. Save this, and go to the console, print it out, and items one, two, three. But remember, you create a reference or get a reference in memory for data structures such as array, hash, or scalar by using backslash. But if you want to convert back from array reference into the data structure, you would use dereferencing, not referencing syntax. Alternative dereferencing syntax would be using the symbol before the dollar sign. Save this, we rerun it, and we see one, two, three. And yet another way how you can dereference is you can use at for what is the original data type, curly brackets, and ending curly brackets. If we run this, it works. 